Okay, so hot on the heels of the proprietary model releases from Google, we now also have a couple of open model releases from the Gemma team. So specifically in this video, I'm going to focus on Function Gemma. There's also T5 Gemma 2, which from looking at it is much more of a research kind of thing, but it's certainly really interesting to check out. And it's small enough, I guess, that we probably will see this being used on edge devices. But in this video, I want to focus on Function Gemma. And basically the whole idea here is bringing sort of customizable function calling to a very small model so that you can use it at the edge. So you could imagine if you want to build a game, if you want to build an app where you want to have a very small language model sitting on a phone, for example, and you want to empower that model, not just to do things like chat, but to be able to operate things in your app or in your game, then you really want to have some kind of customizable function calling. And this is what Function Gemma is all about. So this is building on the Gemma 3 270M model that they released back in August. And that model is really a fantastic model, not only for doing things at the edge and on mobile phones, but it's also a really great model for people just to learn about how LLMs work. It's actually one of the models that we use in our deep learning courses to actually teach people how to do fine tuning, how different elements of language models work. And what the Gemma team has done here is basically take the sort of base version of that and make a specialized version, which is tuned specifically for function calling. Now, don't forget that Gemma 3 is only 270 million parameters of which I think sort of like 100 million is basically the transformer and 170 million in there is the embeddings. That model itself was trained on 6 trillion tokens. In fact, it's even trained on more tokens than both the 1B, 2B, and 4B models. So as a base model, it's pretty much as strong as you're going to get for a model that size that's currently been released. And the whole idea with that original 270M model with both the base model and the instruction model was that it was going to be a model that would run at the edge, that you could use it for doing various different tasks. Now, Function Gemma builds on that by having a specialized version, which is for function calling. And not only is it for sort of function calling out of the box, you can actually fine tune it for your specific kinds of functions to get it to be better at the tasks that you want it to do. And if we come in here and look at what makes it unique, we can see that it's been trained not only for chat, but also for these actions. But like I'm stressing, it's built for customization. So the whole idea is that this is not just you're going to prompt this. You're going to basically come up with your own data set for the kinds of functions that you want to use. And then you're going to fine tune this model for that and then deploy it. So they talk about in here that this is built for edge devices and they talk about things like the Jetson Nano, but really there's going to be some really cool work of this running on mobile phones. And already at the edge, people are using these Gemma models to do a whole bunch of really cool things. One of my friends, George, has got a really cool article about developing an on-device RAG system powered by Gemma models. And I'll put the link for this in the description. It's really amazing that people are getting whole sort of rag systems now that are working on mobile and fully local. And so the whole idea of basically customizing these models for your particular use case at the edge is really a thing that has taken off in the past six months. But now Function Gemma is taking this to a whole new level. You can see here when you fine tune for the functions that you want, you're going to get a nice bump in accuracy. So to demonstrate this, Google's actually released a mobile app of where you can actually see demos of these things and try them out. And they've got a number of examples in here of both sort of apps and games that make use of this function calling running fully local on a phone. And it doesn't just have to be for phones. You can also convert this model to run with something like the Transformers JS. And you can see here's a game where the whole model will actually load into your browser and then you can take advantage of the model and it can be fine-tuned for specific function calling that you want. So if we come into the docs, we can kind of see how this all works, that we can see that, okay, you're going to have special tokens for this. So you're going to have function declaration tokens, 
you're going to have startful function calls. You're going to have function responses going through here. And we can see from the example here, that basically you're going to pass in the tool definition. You're going to pass in a user prompt. You're going to get back a function call. You will then run that on the phone, et cetera. And then you'll take the output of that tool and pass it back in and then get a final answer out from the model. So this is basically the same way that function calling works with all the proprietary models and all the server-side models as well. Here, the main thing though, is that we need to take care of these special tokens and the model needs to be trained for those special tokens. Now the function Gemma models are actually up on Hugging Face already. It's a gated model. So you need to come in here and basically just get granted for access so that you can have access to this. And the cool thing is these weights will work out of the box with the Hugging Face transformers. And so on top of the model, the Gemma team has also released a number of different notebooks. You can see here, this is basically a simple notebook for just doing inference and seeing how it works. I've changed it a little bit so that if you've got your Hugging Face token in your secrets, you can just load it up. You will need the Hugging Face token because it's a gated model to be able to download it. And then we can see just like any other normal model, we can load it up, we can try it out. So here we're defining the actual function, typical sort of get weather function. We set up our ML chat template, and then we can just pass it in. So we've got the prompt, we've got the actual tools that we're gonna pass in. And you can see the output once we actually call this is that we're going to basically get back a start function call telling us what function we should be calling, telling us what the actual arguments for that are going to be. And then in here, they've got a simple example of actually sort of calling that. And then you need to send that back to the actual model. So you just append that message back with the role being a tool role in here. And these are all the elements that the new function Gemma has where the previous versions didn't. And you can see, sure enough, once we sort of finally put that all through, we send those back, we will then get a nice output from the model. And if we look at the messages here, we can actually see what was going on in here. Now, this notebook is really just to show you how things are actually working. Obviously, on your phone, you're not going to be running it in Python. You're going to be running it either in a language that's going to work on your phone. But once you understand how it actually works, you really want to come in here and then look at how to actually do the fine tuning for this. And we've got a really nice notebook here of not only going through the actual model, fine tuning it, but also converting your checkpoints to light RT. So light RT is sort of the modern replacement for TensorFlow Lite. It's basically the application that you use to put models on your phone, on edge devices, etc. And this notebook shows you loading up the model, going through some of the different examples from this mobile actions data set, which Google has also released in here. So you can actually sort of see, okay, what each function is called, what would be the content that goes through there. And we can see that we've got a bit under 10K rows in this data set. But what they show you in here is that out of the box, Function Gemma is not going to be great at this, right? So if you went through and just test it on these particular functions, you're not going to get a great response out. In fact, you can see here that it basically comes back saying, apologize, I can't assist with scheduling meetings. It's just not being fine tuned for that. And so what this notebook goes through then is basically how to do the fine tune. Now they're doing the fine tune using the Hugging Face TRL library in here. Often for a lot of the fine tunes that I would be doing nowadays, for something small like this, we would use the unsloth library. But this goes through and shows you pretty much everything for doing a fine tune of the model. Now they're recommending in here that you use an A100 to actually do the fine tuning and it should take about eight minutes. If you've got a smaller GPU, just change the size in your batch training and your gradient accumulation in there. And then once we've got that set up, we can just come in here and start training. And it will take a bit of time to do your training going through this. We can see here that actually our validation loss dropped pretty quickly. And actually towards the end, we're perhaps even getting to the point of almost overfitting. But the big test here is really to test whether this works. So we can load up that model that was auto saved into this folder. And we can run it through and compare it against the sort of original base model output. 
And we can see, sure enough, this is our prompt. The base model couldn't do this, but the fine tune model, it has no problems. It's able to realize that we should be calling create calendar event. It's going to pass in the date. It's going to pass in that the title is going to be a team meeting and it's going to end the function call there. And the thing is that data set is not huge. You could train that up to do different things and different tasks that you wanted to do. The rest of the notebook then basically has it where you can actually push that model to hugging face. But one of the key things is if you want to run this on a mobile phone, you want to convert it to light RT. This has got the whole code in here for converting it so that you can run it on a mobile phone. You can run it at the edge, etc. So to finish up, if you're looking at doing any sort of edge deployments or mobile phone stuff, this is definitely a model you want to check out, right? This allows you to basically run function calling on a phone, be able to easily customize it with the notebooks that Google's released and to be able to get the light RT version out for deploying in your app. So while a bunch of people were hoping that the Gemma team was going to release Gemma 4, this is not that yet, but it's still very cool. And hopefully we'll see Gemma 4 in the not too distant future. Anyway, on that note, let me know what you think in the comments, if you've got questions, etc. And I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.